Testing one, two, three. The Yellow Ball Workshop is a place where people of all ages come to make animated films. Gene Falcone is working on a face which will be animated. The first step is to paint a face on a sheet of paper. Gene uses felt pens and poster paint. The face is large and the background is simple. She opens her eyes and looks around and then she says, Oh my goodness, what's a bird doing in my room? Jean is one of the youngest members of the class, whose ages range from 8 to 18. There are a maximum of 12 students in a class of mixed ages and experience. Some are new students like Jean. Some are second and third year students who are working on more complex themes and techniques. Paul Falcone has just taken 24 frames or pictures of the lady with her eyes closed. When this is projected on a movie screen, it will last for one second. The separate open mouths are laid on top of the closed mouth. When filming, the mouths are changed every two frames and the hands move upward one quarter inch every two frames. A roll of developed film returns from the laboratory with scenes on it made by different students. Each student winds the new roll of film through the viewer and cuts out his own scene for splicing into his own roll. Here is Gene's face scene. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, what's a bird doing in my house? If the lighting is right, all the activity can go on in one room. Some students are creating art, and over in the left-hand corner, two students are filming a scene which uses special effects. Carol Soans is working on her film, Just a Fishman of My Imagination. The main characters of the film are grotesque fish made out of human eyes and mouths cut out of magazines. A sheet of glass with built-up walls of plasticine is filled with water and braced between the camera lens and the artwork. Each time the camera operator takes a few frames, she wiggles the water with her finger. This gives the effect of an underwater scene. Carol is the director of the film, but the other students in the class will help her film her scenes and make her soundtrack. I'm going to check it out and see if it looks all right through you. Could you wiggle the water or something? Does it look nice? Yeah, it looks really nice. It looks like, um, I mean, like when it's animated, it'll probably really move nicely. This is three-dimensional animation. The camera shoots the action head-on instead of vertically. Mimi Kravitz is acting as cameraman for her sister Amy, who created this set with paper mache and wire. The scene is the Garden of Eden. The butterfly was supposed to flap its wings and fly in to land on the flower. First, Amy tried to hang the butterfly from transparent fishing wire, but she had a lot of trouble. I, see, I wanted it to be gently um, flapping its wings. But we couldn't find a balance point, so I had to stick this big rod up it. You know, it's made of wire. The final solution was to fly the butterfly in on a blue rod, which blended into the blue sky. As soon as the butterfly had landed on the flower, the rod could be removed. Amy could wiggle the flower and get out of the way while Mimi filmed the flower in motion.
Billy Fuchs helps Amy with the animation. Mark Mahoney is a quiet boy who makes films about racing cars and motorcycles. Come back here, punk! I ain't through with you yet! The students come to class once a week for two hours. There are 25 sessions. In these 50 hours, the student has learned how to operate the film equipment and make a one-minute animated film. Animated films have traditionally been associated with humor, but very personal films have also been made. Mark Weiner and Larry Stern, in their film, The Enlightenment, make a strong social comment about the futility of war and the persecution of the individual. This guy, he's a hippie, and he does all these things, and he feels like every, everybody's against him because he's like this, and they're telling him to conform and he, he can't take it, really, and he's getting lost, and he feels, you know, it's kind of paranoia, and he doesn't know what to do, and eventually he conforms, and that's his worst decision, and we haven't decided on his fate yet. Um, the way we're showing this is in the first scene, we're having a whole crowd of people, and they're all going to be talking, but we're just showing him running away. Cut your hair. Hippie, get out and get a job. You lazy son of a... <laughs> Communist. Uh, freak. Uh, bingo. Some people plan their whole story first and then make the art and film the scenes. Kathy Ahern paints first to develop an interesting face or character. Then she makes an environment for the character and films him in that scene. Um, it's just a street scene with all sorts of people, the people walking down the street. And this man walks up stairs, he's reversible. He turns from one stair to the next and going up, and then he goes out through the doorway here. And the rest of the people, this man walks back and forth in front of the windows. And this little boy here is the main character of the film, walks slowly across the street while these other people hurry by, you know, they all have legs and stuff. They're all taken apart, though, now. And then after, this is, you know, seeing everybody in the, in the entire street. The storyline develops week by week as the character has more adventures. We often don't know how the story will end until the film is finished. The cutout characters are usually hinged at the joints with tape and thread on the underside. Kathy's characters are so small, she decided to keep the arms and legs loose. Here is Jean, back at the editor. She is going to remove her scene from the roll. The beginning, or head of her scene, is taped to the edge of her table. The tail is dropped into a paper bag. After she has cut out her own scene, the roll must be spliced back together. This is a work print, or copy of her film. Preliminary editing is done on this work print, or copy, to save wear and tear on the original. There are many different types of splicers, some use cement and others use tape. The class uses this tape splicer for work prints because it is simple to operate. And the splices do not break after going back and forth in the projector many times. The two ends of the film are trimmed. Then the ends are butted together. They do not overlap. A piece of the tape is pressed on top and the handle is pressed down. This cuts off the tape and punches sprocket holes through it. 
The film is turned over and the action is repeated on the other side. After the films are edited, the whole class works together to make the soundtracks on quarter inch tape. The sound and picture are made into a finished print with optical soundtrack at the lab. Let's look at Gene's film now.